Hi guys, welcome back. In the previous video, we created our first ever data prop cluster. In this video, we're going to see how we can run our Spark jobs onto the cluster. So let's get started. But before we get started, we have to do some things. Uh, steps like we have to create a bucket where we'll be uploading our Spark jobs artifacts. And then we have to actually create the driver file which we need to run. So, uh, start with me. We'll first open the command line. Uh, we will use the gsutil bucket. I'm sh I, I hope that you have been following the videos from the starting. So, you have gcloud set up on your machine. So, we will do gsutil mb, which is uh, make bucket. We will name the bucket after our project ID because that is unique. Bucket names have to be unique all throughout globally. We will create that bucket. And this should take about a couple of seconds. And once it's, yeah, so it is creating the bucket. Yeah, it is done. We will copy our Spark driver. You can either copy it off the screen, you can write it off the screen, or you can download it from the resource, uh, which I have linked with the lecture. It's on my GitHub. Go to the jobs from the left panel. You go to the submit job. I have my jobs in the failed state, which I was trying before this demo. Uh, I will say my Spark job. I will choose my region as US Central 1. My cluster is there, my first cluster. Now, there are different job types Hadoop, Spark, Spark R, uh, PySpark, Hive, Spark SQL, and Pig. Uh, for this example, we are going with a PySpark job. We will uh, do this. You will see that. Uh, your file, my file is coming up because I have previously submitted this job. Uh, so this is the main driver file. Then you can add additional Python files, .py files, .egg files, or .wheel files here in this example, uh, in this uh, particular section. Then you can add extra jar files. So for example, if you are using BigQuery, for example, you can add the BigQuery jar here. Then you can add the additional archive files, zips, and tar files here. You can pass in the arguments to your driver from here then you will add certain properties so we will add one spark property which says spark.submit.deploy deploy mode equal to client why are we choosing the client mode because we have a dedicated master in our cluster so we would want to use that machine for running our spark driver rather than the worker machines uh, so we will see review all the uh, values here you can see that you know we can submit the same job via the rest api as well so this will be the payload which we will have but we will see it uh, at some later stage right now we will submit this job it says my spark job submitted successfully it is in running state it has started you will see some logs coming in and it says that it has created hfs directory this is normal spark uh, logging there you will see complete and voila so there it is it has written that table and to verify that we will uh, go to the jobs again we will go to submit job and this time we will say query high so it is a high uh, table right so we will go to clusters my first cluster this time i will say a high sql job high job the query source it could be a query file so you will you can have a hql file somewhere in your bucket or you can say query text in which case you can write free flowing text here so i will say select star from the table name the table name was random numbers and do you want to continue on failure no you can add jar files here properties so on and so forth you will submit this job and i hope it returns the numbers the random numbers that we have generated it might take a little while uh, because it's a MapReduce based job rather than uh, spark or tez by default the hive on data prop runs on mr so it still says pending job output is streaming it is showing the progress here and we'll wait for the output to come And 
here you go you can see the top rows 0 to 99 100, 100 rows are there we created 0 to 99 numbers and that's what you can see now one thing to note is that this data currently resides on the cluster right so if i choose to delete this cluster right here i will lose all the data that means i'll have to keep this cluster running so we will see in a later video in this section what are the implications of deleting the cluster the implications i just now told you that you know you will lose the data but how we can solve that problem that is what we're going to discuss in the next section so uh, to cover up in this video we saw how to we submitted the first ever spark job on our cluster uh, via the console via the google cloud ui uh, in the next video we're going to see how we can submit the same job via uh, the g cloud command line tool see you in the next video bye bye